All right, what's up, guys? We are back with another episode. Uh, we thought this week was going to be kind of boring, and... It's never boring. It's, it's pickleball, it, Chris. Well, yeah, true. It it got exciting. D-List Gate is back, and I'm <laughs> definitely kidding. I mean, we might as well call it that at this point. I'm sure there's got to be more coming, but we'll get you to that. You think so? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we'll get to that, but... Anyways, we're going to talk about, uh, this was my first week back on court after the back injury, uh, some upcoming paddle releases. Then we also want to talk about standard versus elongated paddles and why you might want to pick uh, one Whatever or the other because I've been playing with a standard shape and honestly, I'm having a really fun time with it. So I just thought it'd be fun to chat about. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sweet. I've been playing with more of the standard shape too. I have this, well, not really a new move, but an interesting idea. I mean, this move has kind of been out, but I've been practicing it. So I don't know. Next oh. time you see me, yeah, you're gonna hit see some bit. sorcery. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, I'll hit you when, when we go. Once we start talking about the standard shape paddles versus the elongate shape paddles, because it's easier to do with the standard shape paddle. Is all. There's one specific thing I later I definitely want to talk to you about with standard shapes. That I just kind of want to pick your brain. Knowing your paddle preferences, there's a couple things I want to pick your brain about. But we'll get to that. Okay. Uh, cool, cool, cool. First thing we'll start with is. So first week back on the court, I took the whole week off after Texas. And then this weekend, I did some really light drilling with a friend just to kind of test my back out. It was feeling fine, but I didn't want to do anything stupid. Then I played again on my birthday. And then oh, yeah, I started happy physical. Birthday. Happy Thank belated you. birthday. Uh, it was what? Well, at the time of recording this, it was yesterday. It was this past weekend on Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 You were all partying. You were partying. I texted you at like midnight. I was like, hey, man, happy birthday. Like, oh, thanks. And I was like, well, this guy is still up. What's going on? And you told me you didn't go to sleep until like three. I was like, whoa. I just Chris couldn't sleep. <laughs> oh, you couldn't sleep? No, you were partying it. You know, I already know. <laughs> well, you know what's even funnier, though, is when you did text me that, you were like, why are you up at midnight? And I was like, dude, I was just cubing for like the last two hours. <laughs> you were I, cubing? I haven't oh. done that in so long. Like, I, I couldn't tell you the last time I did two hours straight of solving rubik's cubes and the only reason is i found out that the north american championships are actually in minnesota next month Ooh. and so i was like i might as well go i was like it's right here the only problem is i so was reminded that <laughs> so just I, actually the the event that i used to be really good at i'm pretty confident i could still make the final right now i don't think i would podium when i looked at last year's results i think yeah. i'd still be within the top 10 i oh. think Okay. If I practiced a bit. So I, anyways, for it. We need to I might not this. get to go because there's a wedding, I think that same weekend that we're going to. So I don't know. I'm going to look. I'm going to see if I can make it because it'd be fun. It'd be kind of fun okay. to go go back. Uh, but anyways, <laughs> so yeah, back on the court. I'm feeling good. I started physical therapy today just to get like an assessment because I was like, well, maybe something is really wrong and I don't know it. It's pretty much what I thought it was, or at least so far what they think it is too is just a weak core and ironically <laughs> ironically with as big as my butt is very weak glutes <laughs> literally glutes? the test that i failed the worst actually i think it was the only test that i actually failed was a specific glute related test where you lay on your side you raise your top leg up and swing it behind your back and then he's like okay I'm going to press down on your leg. I want you to resist it. Like, don't let me push it down. My leg just immediately went down. And I looked at him and I said, can people actually like resist? Or is it just like how much you can resist? And he was like, oh, no, people can definitely resist when I do that. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> so pretty confident it's that. But the bright side is he was saying, he was like, you know, it's going to take some work. You obviously have to do all the exercises. But he's like, you should be fine. He's like, you don't have any major issues. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. All yeah. Right. Getting the health back now that you're one year older. How old are you now? 28. 28. All right. Welcome. You're I almost know. part of the Dirty 30 Club. I'm still going to play 19 plus. I'm going to play it <laughs> for as long as I can. I okay. feel like once once you once you play the 30 plus bracket, that's when you start aging. But if oh, you keep really? playing 19 plus, you just stay young. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at Matt Wright. He's like, hey, I'm just going to keep playing with all these like 20 year olds. He'll stay young. Okay, true. You're right. <laughs> Anyways, You're right. <laughs> um, so this week, now that I'm back, uh, that obviously delayed a lot of my paddle reviews. I was working on the Shogun review before Texas, and I will be wrapping that up this week. Uh, if oh, you nice. want the really short of it quick, I like that paddle a lot. Me like, too. It's that was, 
it's really a good. lot of fun yeah it's just uh solid i actually brought the show and that was my backup paddle for texas open i'll probably do a review on it but also there's a part of me that kind of wants to wait for the fat boy to come out as well which mm. we will be talking about a little bit and kind of just do a, re- a video review or a comparison between like all of them because sure. i also missed the boat on the loco as well so i think talking about all four um would make sense and honestly i don't know doug from bread and butter he's doing his lineup i think right he's gotten the different shapes you know yeah. they're all all of his paddles are different enough like you yeah. know what i'm saying they're they're specifically catered for different play styles or different players or people and some i mean you know sometimes it's hard when companies come out with a few different models and they're very similar it's like yeah how do i distinguish between one or another or they're not different enough you know yep totally it's been it's been fun to watch because it's been i think when i reviewed the filth it might have been like july or august of last year but it's been Mm -hmm. fun to watch the brand evolve because a year ago the filth was obviously a great paddle super competitive pricing especially against the carbon 1x but you know a lot of the tone of the brand was still like oh yeah like you know this is like more for fun, good marketing, everyone appreciates it, but like they didn't have a lot of paddle diversity or good, like a lot of options. And it's been fun to watch that expand. Now they have the hybrid, they will have the fat boy. The Shogun is kind of like a upgraded filth, if you want to call it an upgrade, maybe a side grade or a nice addition to it. So their lineup's just more complete, which is nice to see. Yeah, definitely. But Um, it's it's good. Yeah, it's still designed in outer space. It's I just love that he still has that on his paddles. <laughs> Did you see some it's, of the comments? Did you see some of the comments? There's like some customers that put in the comments, please give a raise to whatever alien designed this. The thing is hilarious. <laughs> that is really funny. <laughs> yeah. What I I don't know if they'll ever do this. But, and I I'd want to see like prototypes, I guess, but as I've been playing with the Shogun, I'm like, man, this in a hybrid or this in a standard shape would be super fun like I, there's really nothing wrong with the shogun but i feel like if you wanted different shape options i feel like this surface the titanium would play nice in other variants like i'd like to see it messed around with more i thought for sure that i was just going to be like oh this is a gimmick like it's not yeah. that good it's not that so special you don't, you don't think that it's it's a gimmick you actually think it's something like so you think it's more viable than or less of a gimmick than say kevlar well here's here's my problem So, or here was my problem. So Kevlar, when that came out, like when the Ruby came out, the way it was pitched is what made me feel like it was being treated as a buzzword because there was all these claims about like, the spin is gonna last way longer. It's more durable. It's like a stronger material. And like maybe on spec, those things are true, but it just didn't feel like that actually translated to play on the court necessarily. So my... Mm -hmm buzzword thing was more around the spin and that it didn't perform that different but clearly what i was wrong about is people like the feel of it kevlar is like all over the place now it's clear mm-hmm. the market likes that so i think i think that part has a uh, a thing if the if the shogun came out and was like hey we're gonna get 500 more rpms the grit's not gonna go down and blah 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 like then i would have been like okay like gimmick But they didn't make those claims, and then it was like a nice surprise, like, oh, this is different. I like how this feels, because I can't think of anything that really feels like it. Yeah, I I can't think of anything, Gil, because there's nothing else that's using, I guess, this titanium, like, weave. But yeah, I I do like the feel of it. Yeah, now I will say, before Mm -hmm. we move on really quick, that doesn't mean, like, oh my gosh, this is the next, like, biggest thing, carbon fiber's dead. I'm not saying that at all. Like, we don't need to hype this way up, but I am excited to see or hopefully see other people mess with variants of it because i'm yeah in different I'm, shapes different yeah. thick, uh, core thicknesses to see how it would play um you know with what we have right now like the shapes the handle lengths etc and you know different layerings different composites yeah because yeah, be it's very kind of i don't know how to explain it it has this nice spring feel without feeling like a gen 3 where it's like mm-hmm. too much springiness but the control is there and like power is still not bad. Like it's a very good all arounder. Yes, I would agree. Like I'd probably say the best all arounder for, you know, everything. The touch, the power, it doesn't excel at any one thing, but it does everything really well. 
and yeah something about it is just satisfying to it feels another word i can say is like just it feels buttery i don't know how else to describe it that's that's the word i would use finding that you would choose the word buttery for bread and butter that was no the, the, no pun intended trying right to be punny I, huh trying to be punny i promise, on this I, promise. <laughs> I promise <laughs> anyways okay. all right we can move on from that review will be out this week but i'm i'm pretty pumped for it and then after that high on my list is the spartus apollo and the j2k don't have okay. release dates for those but those are on my yeah. list those are on my list too well i'm working on a comparison video between like the j2k the ruby the azul and the apollo smart um, but it's just it's a lot and <laughs> i'm hitting them i'm try first of all just trying to find the time to hit them side by side and then also some of them just play very similarly and i'm trying to i don't know dial down you know my thoughts on them and i'm not gonna lie to you it's it's tough <laughs> sure it's tough comparing all of them they're all i mean fairly similar in my opinion at least you know the j2k the the rubies and the azul like since they're the same shape you know and then they kind sure. of are arranged within the same you know specs twist weight swing weight they're not too far off from each other you know and also very similar face material so i'm like okay this is really hard to distinguish between them so, sure yeah. i'll look forward to it yeah all right i'm gonna breeze through these really quick we don't need to spend a lot of time on like individual things or i'll read through the list and then we can kind of come back if there's anything specifically yep. we want to talk about but there's yep. some upcoming paddle releases i don't have exact dates on most of these or a lot of them but i thought it was worth mentioning just in case you're you want to be patient for a paddle release or you just want to know something's coming and then decide if you want to wait but anyways there is the 6-0 Ruby 14 millimeter, 6-0 yeah. Black Diamond 14 millimeter, 6-0 Quartz, which will be a standard shape paddle, 11-6-24 uh, Monarch in three versions. They'll have a Gen 1.5, like the Prism, a Kevlar model, and then a, basically it's the same version as the Harache X Control Plus, the model I like. <laughs> How do you even what? remember? I don't even remember. It's that name is so long, and they're like exactly the same as the other. I don't know. It's just. I think they're working on a rebrand. I think not the full brand, but I think they're rebranding their paddle names because I think they finally got the hint that it was like you know what, maybe these, maybe when we use control in every paddle name, it gets a little confusing. Yes, please. So I am I am looking forward to that because I think a Harache X Control Plus. <laughs> So silly. You in say a that standard, nobody has no idea. Nobody has no I, idea what you're talking about. I know, about. I know. <laughs> but putting that in a standard shape, I think that paddle's going to be a lot of fun. That'll probably pack a decent amount of juice for a standard shape. Anyways, okay. I know there's some new Pro XR paddles that are on the radar. Um, Those are the same one right? the old one? What's that? No, we'll, we'll go back. I was just wondering if they're sure. the same. Uh, like, sure, sure. Okay. Um, we'll Honolulu Pickleball has standard shapes coming, the J3K and J3K Pro. I assume that's like the J2K and J2K Pro, but in standard shape. Uh, Bread and Butter Fat Boy, which is a standard shape. If you guys aren't seeing a trend right now, clearly everyone <laughs> wants on the, the standard shape train. Um, so those are all the ones that are potentially coming soon. Mm -hmm. And then if there's yeah. anything you want to go back to, we can. And then you had some paddles you hit this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, other paddles that are coming out, the Laser L-A-Z-R from Groovin. It's kind of like they're moving paddles, but they're utilizing Kevlar. Um, and then I did hit with the Bablat paddles, which I actually think are already released. Yes? Yeah, those are out. Okay. I mean, those are pretty good. Uh, uh, let's just quickly go over what I thought about, I guess, some of these paddles, like Bablat paddles. Um, they're actually pretty nice. That wizard, the green one, that's in my opinion, like a Lux control air, maybe a little bit better. I would say, I think I like the feel of it just a tad bit more, but they're very comparable. And then the striker plus is pretty much a better power air. I think I can definitively say it's a better power air. The sweet spot is better. The feel is better. Um, I don't know, better handle length. Like, you know, if that's what you're looking for. And I mean, Chris Hayworth fellow Oklahomian he went to the finals in singles against Ben Johns and they took him to three and that was a really close close match and he was playing with that yeah so that's good um I also played with the prism long handle uh which is out right now you said uh and dude man the prism is still solid no nah, right? prism is still a very good paddle I, which Vatic prism long handle is super solid 
it's especially for the price and then it also it'll go kind of hand in hand with a video that i'm working on this week um we already talked about it on the pod a little bit last week but it was kind of just an expansion on like our power paddles like a little overrated right now and like the prism still for sure top tier paddle not only just for price but like just as a paddle itself like i mean augie it went yeah. to a final in men's playing with a prism flash so like i think if someone can compete with the best of the best in the world with a soft prism flash yeah you at four five five oh or below it's probably not the it. reason you're losing yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. that's kind of that's to call some out? of the point in my video this week is like okay you're probably not losing because you can't hit the ball hard enough yes no you can't hit the ball well enough hitting the ball hard hitting the ball well two different things right yes okay yep. all right moving up the list real quick fat boy uh i really like that paddle i think it's a good solid paddle great sweet spot um looks cool i mean obviously we played with it at texas open i know it's not released yet but um one of the i, I don't know i like would you say it's all court or would you say it's more control i i need a little bit more time with it the biggest thing that i remember thinking when i was hitting it is that it was a stiffer uh kevlar paddle like than what you're traditionally used to with like say a ruby where it's mm -hmm. like you know a little bit more on the soft side this felt a little bit more stiff so i was like okay that'd be kind of fun to play with especially in that shape i feel like everyone's always like i want a little more power or pop from a standard shape so making that stiffer kind of helps bring yeah. out the best of all the worlds okay yep i agree all right and then uh, j3k and j3k pro actually i think the j3 out of the honolulu pickleball paddles is probably my favorite shape long handle but still kind of like square it's very reminiscent of like the scorpius i guess you mm. could say mm -hmm. and uh i really like the j3 so i'm curious what i don't know kevlar in that shape will do because now that i think about it do we have any kevlar paddles in kind of like that standard square shape with the long handle out there the, the apollo the, kind of the apollo but the handles like and the valer well oh you said kevlar uh yeah i think it's just the the Spartus Apollo, but the J3 handle is longer. Yeah. Okay. So kind of excited for that. And then you mentioned the new Pro XR paddles. Are they actually new or are they just re like a new paint job, like a, a new, new aesthetic? It would be, I guess I'm making a bit of assumption that it's going to be different, but it would be wild a year later to just update the graphics and not the paddle. Well, I mean, the graphics was the worst thing about, I mean, at least Zane's version. I mean, the purple one from Kevin Garnett's pretty, pretty fire, I think. And I think, didn't they have a few other colorways, didn't they? I can't remember. Yeah, they did. You know, they did a handful of colorways or whatever. But the, from the designs I've seen on tour with the new ones, I'm like, yeah, much better, yeah. much cleaner. Much cleaner, yeah. Uh, I mean, I still like the original, the Pro XR 14 a lot, aside from the horrible logo that Zane had on his paddle gosh you know what i should have done a video i don't know why i i miss a i miss an opportunity to compare his paddle with my paddle just in terms of looks and our you logos. did because he said let me know when you release a paddle i did i did i totally forgot i mean that that podcast we recorded that podcast like a year ago but it's okay i'm not gonna i'm not gonna humiliate him i would have destroyed him <laughs> like my logo and my paddle looked like miles better than his like it's not even a it's not even a competition so i wonder I'm, if zane would actually him try and argue that or if he would concede no he would definitely concede i'm gonna let him live it's okay i'm gonna let him live. <laughs> yeah, i would have been oh man i would have destroyed him oh that's yeah. so funny okay yeah. let's move on to the last thing i wanted yeah. to get through all the regular news because i figured if we talked about uh the delisting first the rest of the news is much less exciting people probably <laughs> yeah. skip to this section anyways if i'm being honest <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so before we were about to record this podcast, I was informed that the Batic Oni is being delisted, Ooh. which is crazy. It just happened literally like minutes before we start recording this pod. <laughs> yeah, very, very short before we recorded this pod. And I don't know. I feel like I have so many thoughts about this. Like it, I'm mm. going to... I was given information about all of it, but I want to also talk to USAP and make sure I get both sides of the story just to like do my due diligence on this or whatever. But I'd love to know the reasoning. Here's the thing. When I reviewed this, like I was very clear about my stance on how I felt about this paddle and the experience I had, mm -hmm. because the you more the I used it, review. it got insane. Like it, 
it hit very hard. Like I got to the point where I could control a Gen 3 Yola easier than I could control this. And those aren't an easy paddle to control. So like from that perspective, like I don't, I mean, with the current test, you can't take it out of play just because it hits hard. Like they would have had to get it on some like other technicalities. But regardless, I feel like it's reasonable from that sense. But from what I was explained to from Vatic, some of the reasons that were given, I was like, don't know if I agree with that. So we're going to see if both sides of the stories check out. But I just wonder, like, where is this going to end? So the Yolas, now the, the Vatic. I'm like, is yep. Gearbox next? Like, who... Do who you else know why is on the chopping block? They got delisted. What was the actual reason? Or was it was there a statement somewhere? Of why, uh, from was it about from like USAP on the Oni? Yeah, 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 yeah. On no, why exactly why it got delisted? They've put nothing out yet. That's why I need to contact them and just ask like, hey, can you explain to me like what the reasoning was? Like, I got the message. I think shortly after the message was delivered to Vatic. Okay, got I it. was told I think two in two to three days they're making their final decision, but he. The way it was implied to me is that this was like already final and that it's being delisted. But what I don't understand is because the only, I mean, it wasn't released that long ago. It's still fairly recent, you yeah. know. Um, why, why is it being delisted? How basically, why did it get approved in the first place, and why is it being delisted now? Is there something that's changing in the testing? Like, did they not test it properly prior putting it on the list? Here's my guess, and this is just a guess, is that, well, I mean, there's a lot of things. I don't know, maybe there's, when a paddle gets submitted, I believe there are boxes for you to expand on like, hey, here's what we did to this, or here's what's in the core, or we did something different. And maybe those boxes weren't filled out and like giving USAP a heads up, hey, we did some different stuff. My guess is they don't cut open paddles unless there's a problem. So maybe when they started hearing around the internet, like, oh, hey, this thing's kind of wild. They were like, oh, wait, we need to cut this thing open and see what's up. Because I'm guessing it passed all the initial testing just fine. But then maybe they found something inside of it that they didn't like. My guess is things don't get cut till there's a problem. And I don't think it should be that way. I think there's probably been a little too much, too much trust in like, oh, you know, they're telling us this is what's inside. Like, until there's a problem, we don't need to verify. I'm like, oh, you might want to verify before there's a problem. Do you think they hit the USAP? They don't. They don't hit these paddles at all. I'm like, right? They're just putting it through their machines, and just trusting I don't know. machines. I know no? the paddles go to several locations. Um, they go to like a couple people's. Is it their house? Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. But the paddles go to a few different locations, and then they also go to the testing lab. So I don't know if those people are hitting them or why they go to those different places. But yeah, I'm not sure if they end up hitting them or not. Okay. Right. So kind of kind of a mess, but Vatic basically they told they're canceling the pre-orders uh, for anyone who still had one on pre-order. They're going to refund the customers uh, who bought, who bought one. It. And it just, which is great. I'm glad they're doing that. Yeah. They, they made that decision very quick, um, which, and I'm sure that's going to hurt for them. I don't know exactly how many they've sold, but regardless, I'm sure that's not going to feel good because I know they sold out on their first uh, run the of first shipment. Batch. Mm -hmm. So it's all just a mess. Like nobody wins in these situations, right? Like USAP is probably like people are probably going to be a little upset at USAP because of mm -hmm. like maybe how they approached things that people are also going to be mad that their paddle is no longer in use after it was approved. But I feel like everything had to reach a tipping point where there's going to be a period of time where no one is happy, right? Like mm -hmm. you weren't really doing things or hearing the complaints and now that you're actually doing something about it you're just not doing it in the way that people wanted but we're like hopefully this just means in the future paddles like this don't get released and we don't have to go through any of this right right like don't put them on the list and then don't have people buy them and sell them because the companies and the consumers and the customers are not happy and then take them off like it's just a whole debacle it's a hard situation for everyone like nobody yeah. is in a good situation with this the customer is in a tough spot the company is in a tough spot and so is USAP. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Why did they let it get approved and then take them off? Is the testing not thorough enough? Like how and how, how did they figure it out after the fact? You think they figured it out after they cut it open or played it a little bit more? Like maybe I both. Don't know. Maybe, maybe both. Maybe both. But that's what they should be doing anyways. Yeah, like I from mean from the beginning. 
It's probably hard, right? If you're getting a thousand paddle submissions a year, do you really have to? I mean, think about us. We literally do this for a full time job hitting these paddles and we can't we can't hit, keep up. That's true. That's true. But also like I, you, I don't know, USAP has been testing paddles for a while and we still we, I mean, we kind of know how they do their testing, but it's not as maybe rigorous or as thorough as we would hope it to be. And it's not like it's nearly as transparent and we don't know if they're adding new testing parameters or anything like that to, you know, when new paddles come out, you know what I mean? I mean, we should be aware, like they seem pretty good about like, well, they've been saying like the coefficient of restitution is coming, but it's not in place yet. Like they do feel good about that. But I think the biggest problem and what's being really exposed here is that the current testing does not actually catch what you want it to catch. So like they're doing those tests, but it's not catching like if a paddle breaks down later or, you know, what materials are inside it's just saying like oh hey it passed this test like we don't care what's inside or we don't need to check because it passed that but it's clear that you can't just do that should do you think there should be like a two-phase testing or something like they pass all the initial tests and maybe that's good enough if you if you as a manufacturer like you know it passes phase one and you're like okay after a couple months we play tested more or we'll put it back under the machines to see if things break down and then there's a phase two and after phase two manufacturers can feel very confident that whatever they sell like will pass consumers will be happy etc and then phase one if they pass phase one it's like okay this is up to the manufacturers or up to the companies to up to their discretion to say okay how confident do i feel that it'll pass phase two and then it's then on you know the company's you know responsibility and for them to be accountable if they want to release it after phase one testing versus maybe phase two phase three i don't know something like that Maybe. I don't I don't know what the best approach is. All I know is the current approach isn't it. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all I know. Because I'm telling you, the experience I had, which I realize not everyone has had this experience, like, you know, more people have gotten their ownies. And it sounds like not everyone's had the same thing as me, but mine changed so fast and hit so hard that it was just like, how can this be a thing? Like, it didn't make sense to me. So I don't know if I got super unlucky with both of mine. I know there have been people who have said, yeah, mine did the same thing. Like it got too hot. Now I'm not a huge fan of it, but it's all just, I feel like that's what is such a mess in this industry right now. And we've seen this multiple times. We've seen it with the gearbox, seen it with the Yolas, and I'd, I'd even put the Oni on this list. The fact that they're changing over time makes it very hard for us as reviewers to communicate to mm -hmm. the consumer. Hey, here's what we experienced now. Now that we're more aware that this can be a thing where the field yep. changes, we're a little more aware of it. But in the past, it's like, yeah. oh, okay, like, you know, maybe this is just what it does or we didn't catch it. And then people are like, hey, you said it hits like this. It doesn't hit like that at this all. Is, right. And I'm I like, would give it more time and just be more thorough because we know that this is an issue or it can be a thing. Yeah. And hopefully it just gets eliminated from the industry. I feel like a paddle shouldn't be changing this much. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Changing as much as it does. Right. Especially to the point where it passes initially and then has to be delisted after the fact. Right. Yes. Like, doesn't make any Cause sense. I, yeah, it just curious if USAP makes an official announcement on this, like they did the Yola or if it was going to be more of a silent thing since Vatic was the one who broke the news. Like, I don't really know how that's going to go, but I would hope USAP would make an announcement because if you own one of these, what if you're going to a tournament next weekend? <laughs> yeah, and you need it. Uh, man. It is still, also know. just to be clear, who knows when this goes up? Maybe it won't be, but I did check the website and they were still on the list. But again, I think I was told like minutes after this news happened. So that's probably why they're still on the website. So if after this podcast, you still see them up there, don't know. But Vatic has made it pretty clear that it sounds like they're going away. And also they did say, so they're obviously canceling pre-orders, offering the pre-returns. And then I asked him, I said, are you going to reiterate on the Oni or are you just going to drop it? And he made it sound like they're just going to drop it and go to something else. Oh, okay. Or maybe they iterate and they just call it something else. Could be. Right? Could yeah, be. Yeah, you know, that would probably make the most sense. So it's like there's no, um, I guess, you know, connection between the Oni. Connection people, to the old one. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. what I would do if I was, if I was Vatic. That's all. Sure. So yeah, there's a, uh, more D-list gate. Hopefully next week I don't have another battle to talk about getting taken <laughs> off the list. Like, we don't want this. We don't want to yeah. see this. Yeah. All, All right. right. Moving on to the main topic, the main event. Standard shape versus 
elongated paddles. So clearly, Chris, you've been thinking about this a lot since you played with a standard shape paddle for Texas Open. You yep. moved from your beloved hybrid. Uh, didn't know. You know, it's funny. You, you started off playing elongated, right? When I first met you, you preferred elongated, you know, like Hyperion. Uh, yeah, I would, I would say I preferred over like a standard shape. Yeah. Same Electrum, right? Yep. Dang, it was pretty much all elongated because hybrid didn't exist. You're right. You're right. Hybrid didn't exist. Okay. So then you switched to the hybrid and now are you fully switched back to, are you like standard shape or are you just I, testing it out? I wouldn't say that yet. Um, I'm, I'd say I'm more testing it out to be honest. I don't really know what my primary paddle is right now. There's just so many paddles <laughs> that it's like, I feel like I could go to a tournament and use like five different ones and be fine with any of those five, but I'm very intrigued by the standard shape and I was happy with how I felt my level of play was in Texas. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's some more to this standard shape than I originally thought. Like, I honestly think the standard shape is pretty slept on overall. I think there's a lot of, what's the word I'm looking for? Not stereotype, but just like, not myth either. I can't think of the word I'm think, trying to think of, but basically I think people have this thought about what a standard shape is and why they don't like it, like mm -hmm. for it not having the reach. And they're like, yeah, I'm just, I don't want that. But oh, I think, negative connotations or something. Yeah, exactly. Negative connotation. So I think with the introduction of them getting longer handles, because traditionally they've been really short. Yes. And I think the longer handle helps. And, you know, I think if people just gave it a shot, they might realize it's better than they thought. But I thought it would be fun to go back and forth on the pros and cons of elongated and standard. And then just maybe talk about like what we see as good and bad or what people should consider when thinking about it. Okay, yeah, let's 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 do it. All right, elongated. Let's go over elongated. Elongated pros and cons. Clearly, the pro. I mean, obviously, you have a little bit more reach. But you know, it's funny when you think about it. When you put them side by side, right? It's not that much longer. But then, nope. It, it, but do you feel that the sweet spot, because the the part where you hit the paddle, right? Do you feel like that sweet spot has shifted that much further, or no? I shifted up. I do think it is. I actually think what people are often perceiving as a lack of reach is that the sweet spot is in a different spot. And so it feels shifted. worse when they hit that spot. Right. It's shifted a little bit lower. That's yeah. Like, on a on standard, the, on shape, standard shape. And it's, it's going to be as well. Exactly. So it's going to be down lower. And for example, this is, as I started thinking about some of this, like let's take Isaac as a perfect example. He mm -hmm. says like, I hit the ball higher on the face and that's where I like to hit the ball. If you take a standard shape, that half inch might not be the reason you miss the ball, but it might be taking it outside of what the zone that feels good on that paddle. And now, you know, he needs to hit it more down here or whatever to make good contact. And now he's not. Yes. No, I agree. So, yeah, I mean, and clearly with the sweet spot shifted up higher and you have more leverage, you get, you know, more power. And with more power comes more plow through for, and when I say power, I mean, I'm talking like ground strokes, like serves, returns, maybe third shot drives coming in from transition in the back of the baseline. So that's when we say plow through, like you can really just penetrate through the court and you feel like all that power just gets transferred to the ball. Um, and one way I like to describe it too is plow through is like the, the paddle does, or the ball does not resist the paddle very much. Like when you swing, like the paddle just goes straight through it and doesn't feel like the ball is giving you any resistance where with a really light paddle or low swing weight, it might feel like the ball is like pushing against you harder. Mm -hmm. Like actually your, your willinator is a great example. Like if you hold it out for like a block at the kitchen, that ball is yeah. not doing crap to your paddle. Like there's yeah. so much weight here that it, it just stays there and the ball goes. Whereas like if you took a, Annalie 7.5 ounces like you might feel it push you, you back a little it. more yeah but it, it it pops off really fast yeah um interesting because like with my willinator paddle like when i was playing with it more and it, it kind of works uh but like i almost feel like there's kind of almost like two this is maybe an exaggeration two sweet spots on that paddle like when it hit near the tip you know i go for a plow through and i'm really trying to whip it going from the baseline but when i'm over at the kitchen i hit lower like towards the center right just to get like less power more touch more feel like more connected to the ball so it really just kind of so i'm really actually trying to hit different parts of the paddle for different shots and i got this idea actually from ben ben johns because i mean i've talked to him before and he likes to hit different parts 
of his paddle for kind of like different effects like he hits near the edge so he can get all that spin but there's it's not the sweet spot so it doesn't pop off nearly as far so he can get like like tighter angles and so the ball stays in play so well i've also heard a lot of people i, I think i heard ben talk about this actually when the gen 2 came out when we were at the press event but he was saying like on rolls he likes that square head top more because he tends to hit his rolls near the tip of the paddle and it just gives yeah. him more surface area to like exactly. roll the ball mm -hmm. exactly that's why he shied or that's why when the perseus came out the first yellow perseus came out he moved from the hyperion shape or the, with the c2 shape which was that arrow curve back to the square yep. i don't know if i don't know if it makes that much of a difference but i mean you know if you're playing the best of the best like you're looking for every single advantage you can possibly get i think for most of us us mere mortals like it doesn't make like that. the margins aren't that slim for us exactly right yeah if we're gonna miss hit it we're gonna miss hit it if we're gonna, yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean exactly so, yeah. all right well those are some pros for elongated um, one one more really quick is oftentimes yeah. uh if this is important for people uh elongated paddles you will just find them with much longer handles like the high the yeah. longest long handle on elongated will be a decent amount longer than the longest on a standard shape paddle outside of some weird anomalies but on average like i would say standard shape paddles are going up to about five and a half inches on their long end and mm -hmm. elongated you might find ones that are six inches 6.25 like i think i've seen yeah. as high as six seven. and a half to seven yeah definitely and then some of those handles are like the usual handles are even longer just because of the way that it tapers like from the paddle face to the handle so it maybe it's six and a half but like effectively it could be like closer to seven you know or totally. a little bit longer yeah yep so okay. real quick cons on those uh on an elongated there's not too many but typically they're going to be slower in the hand longer the paddle more weight is in the tip so swing weight will be higher uh mm -hmm. so on average i would say an elongated paddle compared to standard shape like standard ranges anywhere from 105 to 112 and then there's some outliers that do go higher and then elongated on average probably like 117 up to 125 so there is yeah. a big difference in like you might choose one because you favor certain things over another maybe hand speed's really important to you and you're willing to sacrifice that reach and power or vice versa you're not willing to sacrifice the reach and power but you're fine with it being slower in your hand yeah no uh totally agree with you should we go over i guess the pros and cons of the standard shape house or did you want to talk more yeah. about elongated first no let's go over the pros and cons then we can kind of talk about all of it okay all right well let's go standard shape so the biggest pro is like the larger sweet spot and the width like that sweet spot is shifted down the paddle but it's more round or circular right and like it's not whereas the sweet spot on a elongated paddle it feels like it's more like oval or like oblong and it's shifted towards the top but yep it's just more even on a center shape paddle and i think it's better for in my opinion it's better for like control and like resets and blocks certain shots you know yes, so if you find yourself doing those shots more you should be kind of going for that um now where do just you like just really quick before we actually you know what i'll i'll save this question for after because it'll kind of go into go okay. into everything but i do think that is the one thing people should consider when they're talking about like the sweet spots of standard and elongated so especially because elongated tends to have a higher uh swing weight towards that tip the sweet spot might not feel as bad whereas on a standard shape it might feel pretty bad but now if you're talking about the width or the width of the paddle when you're going for like a block or a reset where you might miss on that width a little bit mm -hmm. that's where you're going to get a little bit more forgiveness so sure certain shots you will definitely feel that forgiveness more than others yes and then i think this is also a pro for standard shape paddles since i've been playing with you know i've played with some standard shape paddles. obviously i like the forza mach 2 i like the move in 13s when it's wider and the sweet spot is wider when you go for flicks and rolls and you hit the edge like it still feels good and you can really like spin the ball and you can get those really tight angles whereas on an elongated paddle i have less margin for it. i have to hit it near the top of the paddle when you hit it near the edge side like you know on the sides of the paddle it just it doesn't feel good and yeah it's yeah and it doesn't go nearly as fast either because you have this such a short like motion that like i don't know it, it just doesn't feel as good as the standard shape paddles for like flicks and rolls and roll volleys in my opinion i mean roll volleys are okay but really it's just like 
those quick flicks. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Sure. Yeah. And then we kind of already went over this just a second ago, but hand speed is going to be quicker with these paddles. They usually are just much lower in swing weight. Um, and then two other pros. One of them is like, I guess you can debate. It's not inherently the paddle doing something better, but one thing that I think we can always all do better is better footwork. And by <laughs> having less reach, you have to move your feet better in order to get in a good spot to hit the ball. So I'm like, I kind of add that as a pro. Maybe if you're less mobile and you don't, you it know, you just physically con. can't move better, that would be a con. But if you're someone like my age, you should probably just learn to move your feet better. So I do that <laughs> as a pro. Okay. No, that's good. That's good. I like that. Um, let me see. And then it's just, yeah, usually easier to control but also this could also not be the case because if you're already used to elongated paddles and you're used to where the sweet spot is obviously if you switch to a sandwich shape and you're not used to it then uh, you might feel like it's not as easy to control but i think you know if you had to say on part, average let's say you yeah. were starting out a total beginner in pickleball like you've got someone who's maybe going to be a 3-0 or 325 the day they start would you rather put them in a standard shape or an elongated? Probably a standard. Like, yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking too. Whatever. And th this is assuming no tennis background. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm looking complete beginner. I put them in a standard shape. I want the largest hitting surface area for them as possible. Like that's yeah. it. Yeah. So like that big square, and then I might shift to something with a shorter handle if I think they need more. You know hitting surface or mm -hmm. if they just gravitate towards hitting their backhand with two hands or using two hands in general then maybe i'll try and find one that or recommend them one that has a longer handle but for the most part yeah standard for sure so totally. maybe hybrid but yeah for the most part standard or hybrid yep agreed all right let's go over the cons quick they're pretty self-explanatory based on what we've talked about but less reach not as much power and then i think the biggest thing that people need to consider is just that it doesn't plow through the ball as well. Like as I've been hitting more standard shapes recently, I can tell when I am more near that tip, I feel the ball like annoying me more or I'm like, ah, oh, that didn't quite do what I did, especially as I've been using a Shogun recently too. I have kind of that side by side comparison. I can kind of feel that. So, but I do think that's mitigated uh, by if you just wanted to add lead tape to the head of your paddle, you are gonna yeah. lose out on some of that, the speed. hand speed a little bit, but now you would mitigate some of that plow through problem because you have a bunch of weight at the head. Right. But also how much plow through do you really need? You know, when you, I mean, we talked about this before, you know, uh, if you want a long paddle because you need plow through or you need power. I mean, how many shots are you hitting from behind the baseline? Right. right. How right. many third shot drives are you hitting? So you may be hitting like two or three, but the rest of it is probably up at the kitchen and you know you're exchanging volleys dinks so i mean but it's also a toss-up sometimes because i think about it now and i'm like man the serve the return even like the sh third shot drive are now some of the most important shots yeah like that's that's coming up in pickleball right now so i can see why people have gravitated towards elongated but if you get to the kitchen line like you're rarely needing that extra plow through or you're needing that extra power like you know what i mean well one thing I kind of think about is not even necessarily the plow through as it relates to those shots, but one that I, I'm thinking about when I was playing yesterday with a standard shape. I kept kind of hitting near the tip because I had just literally just come from playing with the Shogun. And I was like, man, if there was like, I was going for like blocks or some mid-court resets. And I was like, if I just had some more mass in the head here, it would just feel a little better as I'm like pushing the ball in for a reset because it would kind of just die because there's not that much mass up there because, you know, it's out wider. So that was more how I was thinking about it. But definitely for like the shots you listed, it would be important. But I do also like that you clarified how often do you actually hit those shots? Because I talk a little bit about that in my upcoming video about power paddles. It's like, okay, people love these paddles for drives, serves, counters, overheads. But like when you think about the percentage of shots you're really hitting in a match, you like third shot drive, you hit a drive and then you go to the kitchen. You don't just mm -hmm. keep hitting third shot drives, you know what I mean? Right. But this is also depending on what level you play at as well. You know, I bet totally. you if you're playing at the lower levels, like, you know, 3 -0, 3 5 I bet you the majority of their points are one of the serve, the return, and maybe the third shot drive. Maybe 
You, you know what I'm saying? Because once you maybe s- even a fifth shot drive. Yeah, exactly. You hit it hard, and then they can't like you know their opponents block it. They hit it out, and then the points kind of over. Like, do you have opportunities to actually dink and volley and play out? You know, longer extended rallies in the kitchen, and then maybe as you move up in level, you see you know less of that being important. But um, I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's it's very it's very uh, nuanced. Right? Yes. It's It's definitely nuanced. nuanced. Uh, Even for me, like, I like to drive. I like my serve. I like returning. And that's, those are some of my strongest shots, right? But I don't mind dinking and, you know, playing the control game. So it's like, when I choose a paddle, it's, I'm like, it's, it's just so different. It's hard. It's really hard for me, you know? And, you know, I think it is the meta of the game being different at different levels. Like, you know, like you said, I think that's a really good point at some of the lower levels, like three, five and below, you probably are winning a lot of the points, like before you get to the kitchen line or not long at the, after the kitchen line, like maybe you're just hitting a speed up and you might win. Whereas you get to four or five, like you're not winning off drives and fifth shot, right? Like you're gonna drive to probably get an easier fifth shot and then you're gonna have to play it out at the kitchen line. And of course there's different metas, like some four fives are just really heavy bangers, right? Like they all, there's all these things that still exist, but I think you can generalize like this group of people or this level, here's what they usually do. This level, here's what they do. And this level, here's kind of what they do. Yeah, if you guys need to know, you know, specifics, for the three five level, you just make sure you ask Chris. He knows all about it. It's like I knew. swear he's the best. <laughs> I knew you were gonna make a joke. I yeah. knew it was too good not to. Come on, you haven't heard a three five joke in a minute. Come on, it's just true. On. It actually has been a minute. It has yeah, been yeah. a minute. Exactly. But okay. Yeah. So one other thing, a couple of thoughts I want to give on this. So, and you can tell me if you disagree or not. I think, short of someone who has like an extensive tennis background and they're so used to hitting higher up on a racket or a paddle. I think for most people, it really wouldn't be that hard to switch to a standard shape paddle after like a week. It'll probably be frustrating for like maybe a day or two. You're like, oh, I'm not hitting the ball where I want. But once I used the Volare Force, I was like, I'm I'm not complaining about the lack of reach. You know what I mean? You just get used to it. You move half an inch more with your foot to yeah. make that ball. Yeah, no. And some, sometimes you don't even have to move half an inch more with your foot. You can just, you actually have the reach like... You don't realize actually how much reach you actually have. How many, basically, if you have to extend your arm fully to hit a ball, right? The reason why you're losing that point is not because, you know, you don't have a longer paddle. It's because you're in a a poor position already. Right. Or your opponent hit a great shot that you need to give them props for, you know? Yeah. So, no, I totally get it. And, I mean, I've been playing, uh, I've been testing out the paddle tech uh what's that wave pro tempest was it tempest tempest wave yeah pro? Tempest like their wave standard, pro, yep. that mm-hmm. one and then also the babel at wizard and there's a shot that i'm working on and it's way easier to do with a standard shape or even like a hybrid paddle but it's essentially a tomahawk like you know mm. this right here oh but sure i've been testing trying to get the tomahawk flicks like a little bit in like the yellow zone like a little bit beneath the net because when it's beneath the net usually you put two hands on it you can do a speed off the bounce right so i've been trying to see if i can do like a tomahawk and i kind of like roll it down here and like go up right to give it top spin versus using the backhand because when you do the backhand the problem is that like depending on the grip that you use it's hard to generate a lot of like torque and spin like you know because you have less movement and then you break um like your wrist and then you have a weak wrist and when you have a weak wrist in any shots you do it's usually a bad thing um for the shots you do but when you do the tomahawk your wrist kind of stays straight and you have more movement i can like move uh more and i saw a few players do this obviously you know we've seen the tomahawk before but usually when you see it it is not not a high ball it's on a high ball right but when i was in wichita and when i was at txo there is this new player he's like starting to play some 5-0 and pro i think his name is yuta and uh, Doug gave him a Shogun. He's from Japan, but I think he lives in Hawaii. But I saw him, and he hit. He played with uh, Pickleball. I believe. I'm pretty sure he played oh, with Ryan. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And he had this shot where he like reaches from beneath, like the, like below the waist of the net, and he just literally flicks it up, and it was like so cool. But in a tomahawk I, position. 
in a tomahawk kind of yeah like a tomahawk did i need to see that that would be so funky it's it's funky i know I've, I've been able to pull it off and it's it's very difficult um uh, I, I like you just have to get the right ball but it has to be like deep enough and then you have to have like the skill like to do it's it's, it's really funky and it's pretty hard to do but i've done it successfully a few times like just drilling it in practice but it's super fun to do and it's very satisfying when you get it but i feel like once that's mastered i think somebody else or somebody out there will be able to master it and i think it will be a very effective shot in certain scenarios yeah. at least at the very least it will be as effective as like a good like yates setup and then like at best like i think it will be i think uh you, know, you might see it as often as say i don't know atp or like an ernie maybe like you know you'll see it more often you won't see a, like i think you know the backhand is still good but i think that shot will become a staple in my opinion yeah. well we can we can clip it and save it for like three years from now we can three revisit it and now. be like was he right was the prediction right oh I'm, I'm practicing next time i see you i i have a setup for it and it's it's pretty nasty like i've only done it successfully once but like it's oh man you're gonna be so mad i can't I, wait i look forward <laughs> to you rolling it into the net <laughs> Or you even might better keep... if you rolled it into like my forehand and I just counted it. <laughs> it, it. That will probably happen probably 20 times. But the one time I do get it, it's going to be so phenomenal. Like you're all you're going to have to do, you're going to applaud me and then you have to bow down to me. And I'm going to make sure that I have an ice pack ready for you to hurt your back when you bow down to me after I pull the shot off on you. So it'll be okay. <laughs> we'll see about that. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, I don't have too much more on it, but I will say with the standard shapes, uh, I generally feel more connected to the paddle uh, than I do with elongated. Like it just feels like it, my wrist is a little bit more, uh, f it's bending more than it should, or it's a little harder on certain shots. And with the standard, I just feel like the paddle is kind of one with my arm. So for mm. me, that makes like the perception of control often feels a little bit better. And I think, you know, when I really think about standard shape paddles, there's a lot of things for a lot of people that it's like the things people really want from it, right? Like bigger sweet spot for like miss hits on like a dink or a block. Plenty of those people mess up. And then also them just being a little easier to control, generally speaking, versus an elongated, like that's good. And then the hand speed also faster on average. So it's like these things that I feel like amateurs need, this shape has, but not that many people are currently using it. So I just... I think it's something people should dabble with more and mm -hmm. just see what they think of it. I don't think it's definitively better or worse. So many things in pickleball are subjective and like, you know, depends on the player. But I really do think this shape, people should check it out more. Yeah, yeah. Give it a, give it a chance. Like play with it for more than just like one or two games. Like try to dedicate, you know, a couple days or a couple, I don't know, maybe like four or five matches with it to really, you know, see if it's for you and if it could benefit you. Because yeah, if you're not, smoking serves or returns and playing a lot of singles or hitting a lot of their shot drives even if you hit those shots like you can still do well with a standard shape paddle but yeah if yeah if you don't need the power from that like yeah there's some benefits to it it might benefit your game so no i totally agree totally agree for sure cool well do you have anything else on that no i think that's pretty much uh it for at least the paddle shapes right now i'm still i don't know i still don't know what paddle shape i'm going to be eventually playing with like you know because remember i think we talked about this couple i don't know a couple months ago but i was moving from elongated to like a more hybrid and i was like you know maybe in like a couple months i'll be switching to like a hybrid shape paddle and then obviously i switched back to an elongated shape paddle i mean obviously i play with my paddle the willinator which is an elongated shape paddle and i did really well with it and i'm like okay i don't need the hands per se like my hands are fast enough and i i was basically doubling down on the strength of my game which is hitting ground strokes hitting returns hitting serves you know what i mean yeah. so i was like oh let's double down on those strengths yep. and as long as my hands are not so like slow or so weak yep. like you know i can play with an elongated paddle but it's totally you, know, you have to make the decision whether you want to double down on your strengths or you want to shore up your weaknesses in your game and your paddle selection can kind of help with that but you have to make the decision what you want to do for sure 
For sure. Let us know down in the comments if you made it this far, what you think, uh, if you are fully against standard or if you're open to trying it or just, I don't know, just let us know your thoughts. I'm curious what people have to say. So yeah. give it a shot and let us know. Cool. You have anything All else right. for the kitchen over here? Well, so here's the problem, guys. I think the food in the kitchen spoiled this week because <laughs> I was going to talk a little bit about my physical therapy, but I basically did that at the intro of the, <laughs> this pod. <laughs> so uh, the only thing I will say about the PT that I didn't mention in the intro that I thought was cool is, okay, I'm just going to tell this whole story because I think it's kind of funny. So I was on the way to Texas. I was waiting at my gate and I'm just standing there like, I don't know, just thinking to myself and someone comes up to me and they say, hey, how's the pickleball been? And I was like, what? I was like, who's who's talking to me? Yeah. And it was it was someone I didn't recognize, but that I've played with like two years ago and they remembered me and, you know, they've seen the reviews or whatever. And so we just got to talking and somehow my back pain got brought up. I Maybe I just said, like, I don't know if I'm actually going to get to compete in Texas. And he goes, oh, it's like, it's funny you say that. He's like, I'm a physical therapist and I have uh, like my own practice here in Minnesota. He's like, you should just come to it. So <laughs> oh, that's sick. where I that's where I went. And uh, I get there and he was like, OK, I'm going to set you up with my guy, Jake. Um, he, he you know, he's worked with a lot of tennis players and pickleball players. Dude, they have a pickleball court at their place. What? That's yeah, like sick. it's not on concrete. Like I think it, it's like a taped line, and then I can't remember exactly what the floor material was. But regardless, they could put up a net. Like they had all the lines, they just put a net up, and people could play. I don't know if that's actually something they do for the PT patients or if it's more for their own fun. But probably both. Uh, yeah, probably both. But it was funny when I got there. I don't know what I was expecting. I've never done physical therapy before, so like I probably just had fabricated something in my head. But I was like, okay. You know, I feel like I was maybe just picturing almost like a chiropractor, you know, where there's yeah. some rooms and a table. But mm -hmm. dude, I got there and like there was like three large rooms that were like tons of gym equipment, like mm -hmm. obviously the pickleball thing. It all makes sense, right? Like a physical therapy, you're also going to be working out. But I was just surprised at the scale of it. So I was like, oh, like this is cooler than I think I thought it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So I, I'm kind of looking forward to doing it. I don't think there's anyone who ever says like, hey, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing physical therapy. But I, I don't know. I feel like I'm in pretty good hands over there. Once I saw the pickleball court, I was like, these are people who get me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I love it. I love it. I'm glad that, you know, you found you found the spot and that, you know, your perception of physical therapist has changed. But yeah, hopefully it helps you out, man, because you've been having these these problems and I don't want you to be making up excuses when I beat your butt using my new shot next time I see you. Okay. I mean, <laughs> none of that. All right. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it, how it goes. Maybe once, uh, my glutes and core aren't weak anymore, I'll just be a whole new, I'll, maybe it'll be pro qualifier at worst pro qualifier. instead of three, five at best. Okay. <laughs> well, I have another thing for the kitchen and that's the fact that you'll be getting an actual brand new kitchen soon. Didn't you just finish like closing in on a house or no? We're very close. So here's the thing. I, I'm confident we have this house on lock. Like we've done all the inspections. All the inspections are good. Um, the seller has agreed to all the terms or whatever. Now it just comes down to financing and nothing should be a problem there. Like I've had a steady business for like 10 years and I've only ever been self-employed but loan officers hate self-employed people yes, like they they do they do not like you so I'm just anticipating that they're not going to make my life easy but other than that yeah the house is like pretty much a done deal yeah. and we will all right close on it in July so that'll be I'm excited yeah, no, they, I mean, the loan officers just got to do their due diligence and just make sure you make their life as easy as possible. Everybody, if you're listening, put down in the comments, you know, throw up some prayer hands for Chris to make sure everything goes smoothly for him. Um, but yeah, man, congrats. I look forward to the, the house party you're going to throw for my arrival. Pull out the red carpet. I got you. you oh, know? no, I'll have, dude, I'll invite <laughs> you, John, and Brayden over. We'll, we'll have go. a good time. It'll be a blast. That, All right. that will be nice now because with our apartment, I mean, you've been here, like basically yeah. there's just a couch someone can sleep on and there's not really a lot of privacy. Now with a house, I'm like, okay, I feel like I can actually have people 
here for like days at a time and they have their own space yeah to do their stuff heck yeah good stuff good stuff I feel like so, that was yeah. one other thing i was gonna say actually about the house and now i am totally building out the studio it. building the pickleball court there oh that's what I was, I was just gonna say this might be this background or the background everyone's used to seeing in the videos like this might be one of the last few times like there might only be like <laughs> Screenshot it, guys. Four to eight more videos with this background. <laughs> Screenshot. You're never going to see this background ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Unless the loan officer really hates me. Uh, nah, 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 nah. They're in, they're in the business of giving people loans. That's how they make money. So they want you to get it. They want Fair. you to get it. They want Fair you to enough. Get it. All right. But cool. Than, That's all I got. Up. All right. Uh, one last thing. I think, uh, I don't know. We'll see if we record for the following week. As I'm going to be in socal uh oh. i'm leaving yeah like tomorrow i'll be there for maybe about a week hang out oh, okay. with uh, justin nam playing some pickleball um i'm gonna be i guess making my own paddle showing a little bit how paddles are made a little bit at least that's the plan i'm gonna be doing some videos for that so i don't know you guys may or may not hear from me uh yeah we'll if you're see. busy we'll like i could always just now now that i know people uh are not like upset with Isaac being on the pod. Like oh, if yeah, you're busy, yeah, yeah. like I'll just have him swap in and then you can come yeah. back the week after. There you go. Isaac, do us proud. Do us proud. Do us buddy. proud. <laughs> yeah. Sweet. <laughs> so that's about it. Oh, speaking of Isaac, um, guys, if you're listening or watching this right now, I'm going to be posting up, I think at least one match from TX. So our first, me and Isaac's first 5-0 match which was a pretty good match. It was on grandstand. It was the only match we could record because there was enough room to like set up the camera. So I'll be posting that sometime this week. So I guess stay on the lookout for that if you want to see that. And yeah, that's about it. Sweet. All right. Sweet. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace.